Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be sharing the key workwear staples to building a workwear wardrobe. Now personally I've been working in an office environment for a really long time. I've been a lawyer for over 10 years and before that while I was studying at university I was working as a paralegal in a law firm. And so now that I do the calculation I've been working in an office environment for over 15 years. Too old as f if you've never worked in a corporate or office environment before, it can be a really intimidating and foreign place. And if you've just scored yourself a job in an office, yay, go you! Personally though, I found that navigating, building a corporate wardrobe and my office attire to be really difficult at first. I made some really strange purchases in the very beginning. Ew! That didn't end up being the most versatile pieces and ended up being a big waste of money. However, the silver lining with those mistakes is that I get to share with you all of my learnings so you don't have to make the same errors. This video should be helpful to any of you navigating the corporate world for the first time or to those of you that are navigating a comeback. The parental leave, a career break, a career change, the pandemic, whatever. 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 Whatever category that you fall into, I hope this video will be helpful to you. So without further ado, let me talk you through the 10 workwear items that I prioritize over everything else. The first item that I'm going to talk you through, that is one of the key workwear essentials, is a blazer. And this is a bit of a no-brainer here. I've pulled two blazers from my wardrobe. I've pulled a lighter neutral one here from Reese and a navy one here from The Fold. And I feel like having a dark coloured blazer and a light coloured blazer will set you up for a really long time in terms of building your work wardrobe. If you wanted to keep it really minimal and pared back, then you really don't have to go beyond these two. If I had to pick one jacket out of these two as my very first blazer, then I would opt for the darker colour, just because a darker colour will be more versatile when it comes to mixing and matching with your wardrobe staples and in terms of shopping for blazers I don't discriminate in terms of where I shop I will shop on the high street as well as look to contemporary brands you don't have to spend much to find a really good quality blazer but something worthwhile noting is that if you do spend more money you will generally see better quality and additional designer features that will make it look more elevated so my advice to those of you that would be looking to the high street H&M and Zara for example is to prioritize the classic colors like black and navy in a classic cut don't go for something too trendy because more often than not it will have a shorter lifespan and we want to make sure that dollar goes further right 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 the next workwear staple that I have to talk through is a skirt and I initially had this written in my notes as a pencil skirt but now that I read it it feels a little bit old school <laughs> I think dress codes are not as stuffy as they used to be and I think that that fitted pencil silhouette isn't as necessary as it might have been back in the day. Still that's not to say that I don't like the silhouette, I really like a pencil skirt because I think that it can look really sophisticated and chic and the one that I'm holding up here is one from The Fold which so happens to be the pencil skirt that goes with my current ensemble. Mixing and matching with the same sort of colours is ensures bang for buck. To try to like I'm trying to like make sure you can see everything that I'm wearing. Mm. Pencil skirts work really well, particularly if you're wearing something a little bit looser up top, like a blouse. It also looks great if you're wearing like a fitted knit. Pencil skirts are really quite versatile for that reason, which is why they appear on so many essential workwear lists. However, there are other skirts that are just as versatile and flattering and appropriate for office environments. I have a few examples here to show you. This is a midi paper bag style skirt from Q, which is in black. It's a lovely light fabric, which still looks conservative, but is appropriate for the warmer months. This doesn't have a fitted silhouette, but it still looks just as dressy. I've worn this to a few events. Don't need that tight silhouette. And another equally as versatile skirt style is the wrap skirt. And this isn't even in a solid color, it's in a print. If you are more inclined for pattern and something a little bit more interesting, then I would recommend that you prioritize neutral tones when it comes to prints. I find that this skirt really works well because of the browns and the beiges. And a wrap skirt is just as dressy and just as appropriate. This one here is an old one from Scanlon Theodore that I managed to nab on sale that I'll link a few similar styles for you in the description section below. If you want to explore options beyond the pencil skirt. The next item that I have to share with you is a power dress and personally 
personally, because of my profession, I found that power dressers have really come in handy. Now I appreciate that power dressing means different things to different people and personally a power dress is a one and done piece that I can just chuck on and I immediately look like I mean business. There's an element of structure, of tailoring to give an overall sophisticated vibe and particularly if you work in a client facing role or you're meeting with stakeholders or you're heading to court and you need to dress for the occasion, I don't think that you can go wrong with having a couple of power dresses in your arsenal. They will really come in handy, particularly when you need that additional boost of confidence. The one that I have here is one from Karen Millen. And this is one that I've had now for a few years. I've got this in a couple of colors as well. It's the Forever Dress. It's a really beautiful cut and the dress comes with the belt. This is part of their core collection and gets constantly released in new colors. So I will have them linked below. The sizing can be a bit tricky because it's so fitted. I went with my usual size, but I do find the sizing to be a tad on the small size. But I think Karen Millen's returns policy is pretty friendly. And so if you need to try on different sizes, then you should be able to do so. And then you can return the other one that doesn't work. Personally, I think this dress is amazing. It Flatters a lot of different body shapes, but I also have other dresses in my wardrobe that give me that boost of confidence and also fit in that power dressing category. The next workwear staple that I prioritize is a blouse. And I prefer blouses over traditional shirts just because I find it's a more feminine take on a shirt, it's a bit softer, but you still look like you're in business because of all of the usual things that you'd find on a shirt a collar, pockets, cuffs. Back in the day, silk shirts were really hard to come by and were really pricey. Brands like Equipment would sell them for about three, four hundred dollars. I had a couple of those. I can't believe I bought those back in the day. But these days, a lot of high street labels and contemporary labels have them at a really reasonable price. And so I have one here from Everlane. This is a white shirt that I constantly wear. And this is made of their washable silk as well. And so you can put this in the machine and you don't have to worry about fussing about with the dry cleaner. I would recommend that. But a traditional silk shirt that I also have here is from Lily Silk. I think Lily Silk have some great options and I prefer sort of a matte silk, the crepe de chine, as opposed to the Shamu silk, which has that shiny satiny finish. Because I think in a workwear environment, you don't want to be too shiny happy. I would recommend those two places for buying reasonably priced silk blouses. The next workwear item is the tailored trouser. And similar to the outdated pencil skirt suggestion, I initially had written down here sort of a slim fitting trouser. And I have a few. I have three pairs here. I've got a navy pair from The Fold. I've got another navy pair here from Uniqlo, which is amazing value. And they also hem them up at the store for like $6 and a black pair here from Sarah Lloyd. They are the three pairs of slim fitting trousers that I have in my rotation and they are incredible and great staples. However, if slim fit is not really your thing and you want something a little bit more looser, then I've also found that a straight looser cutting pant like these ones here from the Frankie shop have also been just as effective. And so I think for me in this category, I would just go for whatever pant you feel is dressy enough for a work environment that you feel will be versatile with your existing pieces. And I would go with that, whether it be loose fitting, whether it be slim fitting, just as long as it looks conservative, not too much of a crazy trendy silhouette and you'll be fine. If I had to choose between the looser straight cut and a slim fitting trouser for work, I would still opt for the slim fitting trouser because I think my profession is still a little bit conservative in that regard. And I think that a slim fitting trouser is ultimately the most versatile piece, but I'm not discounting the fact that straight cut trousers also have a place in an office environment as well. I like you, I like you, I like you a little bit more. The next category, which would be a bit of a no-brainer if you've been following along with me for a while, is knitwear. I think that having a solid rotation of neutral knits is essential to your workwear wardrobe because you can just wear them with anything. You can wear them with your skirts, with your trousers, and the world is your oyster. Depending on what your preferences are, you can find a knit that will make you very happy. Personally, I have a lot of room in my heart for a cashmere knit and I have a fair few from Everlane in my collection as well as Uniqlo. I think that they create really great staple knits and personally I found these to be incredible building blocks in building a workwear wardrobe and of course you 
can wear them off duty as well. And so more bang for buck, make that dollar go further. So the next few pieces in this workwear staples roundup will be items that complete and finish off your looks. So I'm gonna start off with shoes. Let me grab them. Oh, okay, they were sort of like living down underneath my rack there. <laughs> so when I was typing out this list, in planning for this video, I initially had written down black heels. And reading back now, I don't really know whether it's entirely necessary to have heels, but I do think that black shoes are a great starting point. So if you do work in an office environment where heels are necessary or are a thing, then a go-to pair of heels for me personally are the Sarah Flint Perfect Pumps, which I have featured in a previous video sharing you different ways that I've styled them for work. This is the Perfect Pump 85 which means that it's 85 millimeters high and these are incredible they've got all of these additional sort of features that make them comfortable so that you can wear them for a long period of time and they don't kill your feet like other shoes do <clears throat> Kristen Louboutin <clears throat> ouch but these shoes will not do that so in terms of a black pair of pumps these are my go-to if mid heels are your thing and they are also my thing you want a little bit of height but not too high so that you can sort of still run around Goldilocks pair. Then I really love a pair of black slingbacks and these are a pair that I have from Dior. I was really lucky to get these secondhand, but you can get yourself a pair of black slingbacks anywhere. Just make sure you take care of them and they will last you for ages. I think that there might be particular office environments where slingbacks might be seen as a little bit too casual, but in all the office environments that I've worked in, in Australia, I've never had an issue with wearing slingbacks. They've always been fine. And if you don't want any height at all and you just want a pair of comfy flats that look polished, then a pair of black loafers will be an excellent addition to your workwear wardrobe. You can style these with pretty much anything. They always make everything look so elevated. This pair here I recently bought from Gucci and are featured now in several of my videos because I love them so much. I would highly recommend that you get a pair of loafers full stop, not just for work, but I think for everything else too. Everyone needs a pair of loafers. These are pretty versatile in a workwear context as well. The next workwear essential that also falls in the accessories, items that finish off looks category is a handbag. The one that I'm sharing with you here is the Celine Carbis Tote. I think it's the ultimate work bag because it fits a ton of stuff, including a laptop if you need to cart one with you to and from the office every day. Now, initially when I started work, laptops weren't really a thing. And so I was able to carry whatever bag I really wanted. Sort of a larger shoulder bag, a top handle, and I would be fine as long as it carried all of the essentials that I needed for the day. But these days, because I have to cart a laptop with me to and from the office, I now rely quite heavily on totes and I have a few now on rotation and so I think that getting yourself a good quality work bag where it can neatly hold all of your stuff and it is comfortable to hold, I think it's very important and picking the right one and a stylish one will of course finish off your look and make you look super chic. This little thing ticks all the boxes but I've also got a heap of others that I will link below and I've also got a blog post that I'll link below too where I share with you the styles of handbags that are great for the office. And the next item in my workwear staples roundup is a coat. I've got two here to share with you and in case you've missed it, I've recently uploaded a video sharing my entire autumn winter coats collection. It's a long one because I have a fair few coats. I love a coat, but I figure because a coat is such a visible piece, it's the item that everyone sees you walk into the office in, it's the item that you'll throw on as you leave the office it doesn't hurt for it to be a stylish one. And when I was initially starting out, I had this really cutesy black hooded coat, which thinking back, there was nothing wrong with it. It was a really cute and youthful piece, but I'm really happy now that I've got some classic sophisticated ones on rotation because I think it sends the right message. I think that outerwear is one of those things that you really shouldn't scrimp on. And so I have here a classic camel coat. This one is by The Curated. And I also have a really slick modern style coat also by The Curated. I've got reviews of each of these on my blog and you can also see all the different ways that I've styled them for work. So a minimal swanky looking coat is a must. And last but not least is the smallest item that I have to share with you, but one that wields some mighty styling power, and that is my belts. And I think a belt is one of those items that just instantly transforms your outfit. You can wear it over a dress, you can wear it over a coat, over a blazer. It's one of those items that can be completely transformative, and it's such a small detail. 
I've got two belts here, my Gucci belt and my Loewe belt, which I've featured previously on the blog and also in other videos on my channel. A designer belt isn't necessary. I had a lot of minimal leather belts when I was starting out. All you need is a really good quality leather belt, whether it be black or chocolate brown. I like my belts to be on the thinner side rather than the thicker side, not to make so much of a statement. And the widths that I have on each of these belts is about three centimeters. And that is probably the thickest that I would go because I find that it works as both a waist and a hip belt. And that's it. Those are the 10 workwear staples that I would prioritize over everything else, particularly when it comes to the building phase of a workwear wardrobe. I think if you pick the right pieces, they will serve you really well for many years to come and they easily mix and match with each other and they do all the things you need them to do. Boost your confidence, make you look like you mean business, all that jazz. That's what you need, particularly when you're walking into an office every day. You want to look and dress the part. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I will have more videos coming your way soon about workwear, personal style tidbits and handbags, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys. <laughs>